Good morning, good afternoon, good night, good whatever time this is. This is Right Me in a Film. So I wanted to start like a book's beginner's guide series. So this is the first installment of that series. So we have book's beginner's guide to book slumps. So this is all about tips and tricks to get out of a book slump, as well as some recommendations on books that will help you get out of a book slump and why. Um, I have my coffee of choice, drink of choice is coffee, um, my computer, my headphones, my little mic, and, uh, let's just get right into it. I think I have 22 tips and, like, over 10 book recommendations, so I'm just going to jump right in. So I was in a book slump literally all of May, and I did end up doing some of these to help me get out of it, so I will say that they do work. I'm not saying, like, all of these work for everybody, but you kind of have to just figure out what works for you and your book situation. So, um, oh, also, if you can hear noise in the background, it's because my house is literally un under construction, so I'm, like, hiding in the corner of a room trying to film this quietly. Tip number one is to just wallow in it for a bit. You know, take a break. Everybody has things that they love and enjoy, and you get burnt out if you just do them constantly and force yourself to do them. Reading, personally, for me, is, like, a creative outlet, and so it's good to just like kind of let yourself step away from reading books for a couple days, a couple weeks, whatever that is for you. Sometimes it's good to just take a step back and to be like, oh, it's okay that I'm not reading at the pace that I normally read or I just don't feel like reading. It's supposed to be fun. So just like let yourself have a break. Number two is to watch other people reading or their reading content like booktubers, book TikTok, book book talk um just watch people read maybe watch reading vlogs or challenges that they do get maybe some recommendations just in consume book content even if you're not reading because it's still fun personally i love watching other people read and their opinions on books and so it really motivates me and inspires me to want to read when i see other people reading and talk about books that i want to read also number three is to go to bookstores or libraries or whatever and just see what's out there like you don't have to buy anything but just go wander around and look at books look at your favorite genres look at the different shelves just see what's out there see new releases see the pretty covers just become in the atmosphere of books and just kind of surround yourself with books to to maybe inspire you to want to read or just to get some ideas on books you might want. Um, along with that, number four is maybe buy a book that you've been wanting or, I uh, like, everybody has their favorite book ever and it's not a unique concept. There are other books similar, maybe in different ways out there. So maybe buy a book that you know is similar to books that you like so that you're kind of reading your favorite book in a different font, if that makes sense. Number five is to reread parts of your favorite books. So I know people, rereading is kind of an interesting hot take maybe. Some people are like, it's a waste of time. Some people are like, well, why not reread your favorite book? You love that. Um, I would suggest not to reread your entire favorite book, but maybe just reread the parts that you love and enjoy. Just to like get your feet kick, kicking up in the air, your giggling sense of self out there and just like, reread those good parts that you know you love because you're still reading you're just like reading something that you know you enjoy while also skipping the parts of a book that you love that you maybe don't like so much because nobody likes a hundred percent all the pages of every single book there's always at least a little bit that's like man i wish we could skip that so just skip it and read what you want number six is to reorganize your books or your bookshelves I found that I do this a lot when I struggle to read. I reorganize and just like go through old books. I reorganize how I display them or the order I put them in or just just reorganize yourselves. I found that surrounding yourself with your favorite books or books that you've already completed, it's like, wow, I've read all of these books and that's so accomplishing. And it's fun to make them look pretty and presentable because these are like little accomplishments that you have. Seven is to try a new book format. So let's say you love reading paperback. Maybe try an audiobook or an e-read, maybe a different 
reading format like um a genre like maybe if you don't read poetry try poetry or something like that just try a new book format to see it's a good way to test out different reading types to see if maybe you do like that because maybe you're not enjoying what you love to usually read so try something else try a different way eight is to look for book quotes on tiktok with those audios that get you hooked literally those hook me every single time where it's like some intense uh audio with like the slides where it's like quotes from a book or like a scene from the book and you like get hooked and you just keep swiping and swiping and swiping i love saving all those if not to read the books but just to like get invested and to be like ooh, i want to read that has a a third act break lip breakup trope that's an terrible example but like oh i want to read a book that is a huggy romance where the guy says who does this to you or blah 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 and those no matter how mundane they are for a fact get you hooked number nine is to go on pinterest and just to look up book aesthetics it could be a specific book it could just be books in general just like look at aesthetics and just just Look at the pretty pictures along with that. I personally, I do this for my show, but I also do it for regular life, is to make mood boards of the books that I have read and enjoy and put them as like my computer background, my iPad background, whatever. And it's just fun to make a mood board or a Pinterest aesthetic to just fully invest in become encapsulated by this world that you love. Number 10 is to switch up your reading location. So maybe go outside, go to a coffee shop, um, go sit at the park, maybe go to your living room, sit on your front steps, just switch up your reading location. And with that, go somewhere that you can only read a book. Like, I really like to go to the park with just a book and my phone and some headphones. And like, literally all I can do is read a book because that's all I brought with me to do is read a book. And I like to walk there so that I... If I'm not reading the book, what else do I have to do besides sit there? I have to walk back, so I might as well read something while I'm at it. Uh, 11 is to start a book, and if you don't like it after 50 pages, stop and switch to a new book. Because I feel like when you're in a book slump, you just don't know where to go. So pick up a bunch of different books that maybe are on your TBR or whatever. Read 50 pages if you don't like it, go to a new one. Read 50 pages if you don't like it go to a new one don't stick to reading a book that you aren't enjoying and usually after 50 to 100 pages you can tell the vibe of a book and if you possibly will like it or not that doesn't mean that you won't like it in the future it just means that this isn't the book for you right now 12 is to listen to book playlists or make book playlists this can be while you're reading maybe it's like lyrical or not lyrical um instrumental music that's really setting the mood or maybe it's a playlist about a book that represents the book. I personally make tons of playlists for books to just songs that represent specific moments or specific characters to, again, just fully dive into the world of that book and those characters. 13 is to really set up your book vibe. So that's tabbing, annotating, get your stationery to look exactly how you want it to, get your tabs to match the cover, set up your front page so you have like a tab uh, log table of contents situation just take time and read a book really slowly and just annotate the crap out of it and just make it like an art piece that you enjoy to look back on in the future 14 bring a book everywhere you go everywhere you go i do this anyway i have a book in my purse just bring a book everywhere you go because you never know when you have some downtime, maybe you're at the DMV and you, the line, you're 47th in line and they're on person two. And what are you going to do? You don't feel like sitting on your phone. You can't listen to TikToks out loud. Pick up your book. Read a book. Also, you look really sick just sitting there reading a book. Like, that, I want to be that girl. So be that girl or guy or whatever. 15, update your Goodreads. I know. I know for a fact you your Goodreads is not up to date, whether that's books that you have and you want to read and you haven't read or books that need stars books that need reviews books that need updating update your goodreads it really 
gets you invested. And along with that, make lists. Like, you could have a want to read for your summer reads, or romances, or books with the one bed trope. Just like make a bunch of lists of books that you want to read and make your Goodreads all cute. I know Goodreads is really out of date, but you can still make it cute. 16 is to try a book to movie or book to show adaptation. Now, there's two ways to do this. First, you can read the book. Well, I guess there's three ways. You can read the book, then the movie or the show, or you can read the show, watch the show slash movie, and then read the book. Or what I like to do is buddy read with the show or the movie, like read it and watch it as it's progressing and then compare it. It's kind of fun. Even if you hate the movie, I'm personally not a super big fan of book to movie adaptations. I feel like they have to be categorized separately, but it's kind of fun sometimes to be like in on the secret and be like, that's not what happened in the book. And sometimes it's fun to just watch it and visualize what you're reading. 17 is to try a novella. Um, there are tons of series out there that I'm sure you have read, and a lot of series have novellas to go with them, and they're really short, and you already know the world, so sometimes it's nice to just read a novella because it's pretty quick, you already know what's going on, you're invested in the world, like, just, just try a novella, or even a short book, or a short story, or a novella set, which is, like, a book that has a ton of novellas in them, just try that out. Sometimes you just need something quick to get you back in. 18 is to put it on your to-do list. Now, that doesn't necessarily, like, I know it's, I said at the beginning it's supposed to be fun, but sometimes you do need a push and be like, just put it on your to-do list. Like, I'm going to read 50 pages today, so then you can do it and cross it off and feel accomplished. Number 19 is to use your calculator. I do this a lot when I'm struggling to finish a book that I do this actually a lot at the beginning because I struggle from 1 to 30% to like get a book going. Once I'm 30% in, I'm pretty into it and I don't need to do this, but use your calculator for number of pages, number of chapters, number of hours. Break it down into bite-sized chunks and work through it that way. Along with that, a lot of the times I put tabs like 50 pages or every 10 chapters or ever so many hours or whatever to just motivate myself, be like, oh, I'm going to read 50 pages today and then like for a whole week I'll read 50 pages and then I'll be done with the book. 20 is to do a task, read a chapter, do a task, read a chapter. This works like when you have a big long to-do list, sometimes it helps me to get my to-do list done to do this as well. If I'm like more invested in reading than my to-do list, I'll make a list of the day of what I have to do. And then I'll say, oh, every time I do a task, I can read a chapter. And it works both ways if you're struggling to read or if you're struggling to do your tasks because you break it up and get breaks every task that you complete. 21 is to become the main character. Now, this can be like, oh, I'm going to the main, the main character in my own story, or I'm going to be the main character in someone else's. So you can do that however you want. Like if, let's say, I want to be the main character of the Boys of Tommen series. So I'll, what does Shannon Lynch like? Who is she? What does she do? How does she dress? What does she eat? What does she do in her day? What does she listen to? Just literally become her and just you're the main character so what would the main character do she'd read a book and she'd set the vibes right and she'd wear this outfit and drink this drink and yada 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 become the main character of you or the main character of someone else and 22 is to set a goal challenge i this is actually how i got back into reading after my book slump i read seven books in seven days so you could do maybe read one book for a week or read seven books in seven days read a certain amount of pages in a day read a certain amount of hours in a day um read a specific genre for a week look on book booktubers videos and you'll see that they have so many challenges and it's really fun to do them like you don't have to have a book video account to do a book challenge just do one for yourself and it's really fun and I really enjoy doing it you can document it just for yourself and make like a little video just for yourself to have and see like oh I did this fun thing or you can just do it to be doing it and it's really fun to like challenge yourself in your book your book reading 
Okay, so now I have, I think, 10 or 11 book recommendations that I think are good to get out of a book reading slump and why. I don't have what the books are about, or I'm not going to talk about what the books are about. I'm just going to talk about why I think that they're good to get out of a reading slump. This will be a little bit rapid fire. So first we have The Summer I Turned Pretty Trilogy. This specific to this season because it literally just brings all the summer vibes and it's like a beach read. It's just a fun summer vibe. Two, we have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder trilogy. This is kind of like an interactive series. Like there are time capsule chapters and audio recordings and letters and just different different types of chapters that are kind of interactive and they really hook you to the book and help break it down. Third, I have the Meet Cute series that Amazon did in collaboration with Goodreads, I think. I don't know who the collaboration was, but it's basically like speed dating six guys. It's six novellas all about different meet cutes and they have, they're all written by a lot of famous female authors. And like I said, it's basically like speed dating six guys. Four is the seven year slip. This book is really fast paced and it's simple. It's a quick read and you just kind of it's just, you're just reading it and you don't realize how far you get. Like, you can read 100 chapters and feel like you read 20. I meant pages, not chapters. Five is The Inheritance Games. This is a trilogy, but there's still more in the making. Um, honestly, the chapters are just so short. Like, some, most of the chapters are two, three, four pages long. The longest chapter, I think, is maybe eight to ten pages long. And short chapters really help you when you're in a book slump. Six is Divine Rivals. This has very pretty writing, but it's not overly complex of a story. There's also only two books, and there's a lot of letters which help break up the chapters, and I think it's just fun to see different fonts throughout a book representing different things. Seven is The Last Thing He Told Me. This book is short and easy. It's like 200 some pages, and you can just, I sat down and read it in one sitting. It's just an easy read. Eight is Love in Other Words. So this is a then and now story. And I feel like a lot of then and now stories are really good for getting out of a book slump because you want to find out what happened in the past. And then you're like, oh, that happened. And then you're on to the future. And you're like, oh, what's happening now? And you just like, don't want to stop because you want to figure out what happened in the story then and like what's going to happen now and how the two stories meet up together. Nine is Bride and this is if you don't read a whole lot of paranormal romance. I've never read a paranormal romance or a megaverse situation so the whole time I was like what is going on and I feel like if you haven't read any of those books it's good to get out of a reading slump because you just want to keep reading because you're like, what is going on? 10 is Archer's Voice. This book is just a sweet little summer romance. It's very calming of a read. And it's just, there's heavy topics, but it's a very lighthearted read overall. And just a sweet little summer read. And then finally, I have Picking Daisies on Sunday. This book has very simple writing. And it's not that complex of a story. And it's not... The writing isn't like so outlandish. It's just a great aesthetic. All of the characters have great aesthetics and the story as a whole has a great aesthetic. And I feel like sometimes aesthetic is all you need. The story can be trash and the aesthetics, the vibes are just right. And you just want to read for the vibes. Like this is a walking Pinterest board of a book. And that was all of my tips, tricks, and recommendations on how to get out of a reading slump. I'm finally out of my reading slump, so my next month's rack, wrap up, my recommendations, my thoughts on all the books will be way longer, and I'm so excited. It sucks to be in a reading slump. I feel like reading slumps and life slumps kind of go together, so I hope these tricks, tips, whatever, help you. I know all of them won't help everyone, but maybe you can find the one that helps you and get out of the reading slump, because I know it sucks. Um, I hope you have a great day. I hope you get out of your reading slump and read a fantabulous book and find your next five star read and the vibes are just right. Um, yeah, thank you. Have a great day. So that was Write Me a Film, a beginner's book, beginner's guide to reading slumps. Mm, bye.